All right, so for the first two weeks of class, we started a, a, a website from the beginning. We're not going to start it from the beginning anymore. We're going to resurrect our site. So here's what we need to do to set ourselves up. If you don't have a copy of the instructions for sheet number four, let's go get a copy of it right now from the network folder. If you didn't get a chance to print it out, you'll print it out a little later. You want to go back to computer window, classroom data, find our class, Campos WordPress 1, and I'm talking about sheet number 4. See how they're numbered 1 through 4? Get a copy of that, drag it to your desktop. <coughs> You'll be able to print it a little later. After you drag a copy, you want to double click to open that. Quick overview, last week we did this part, archive your site. We're going to do it again at the end of the day because we're going to create, I mean, we're going to add more to our website and in two weeks I don't want to start over again. We've got something that we've been building. So at the end of the day we'll do this together again. What we will do in a moment is resurrect the site. As a general overview, we still have to launch WAM and create a database but then the process is a little bit different. We're not going to create WordPress empty again. We're just going to use our files from last week to bring it back. If you don't have your files from last week, you can borrow mine from the network folder. In the network folder, I have got a folder there with last week's project, which we can get a copy of and use in just a moment. But my overview is that we're going to create a database again. We're going to copy the work from last week into the www folder. We're going to go to this specific address. We'll see why specific but not specific in a moment. And it'll ask us, okay, the name of your host, your database, etc. We can supply all of that. We'll go through this process to resurrect. We'll click OK and then the site will come back, basically. And this same sort of procedure, we'll see a variation of it later. Because eventually when our site is done and, we, and you do want to use it perhaps, I want to upload it to my GoDaddy, this process will be very similar with some variation. When we get to that point, we'll be able to use Duplicator to transfer our local host version up to the real server, the real GoDaddy, the real Bluehost version. So let's set ourselves up here. We need to log into phemyadmin. That assumes we've got WAMP server running. So go back to your desktop. On your desktop, double click your start web server. Open up your favorite web browser and then we'll go to the address right there, localhost slash php my admin. Remember, you have to have WAMP server active first before this address will work. All of WAMP server creates a virtual server. PHP, my admin, is part of that server. It's where your database lives. So if you don't have WAMP server running, PHP, my admin, won't work. We've seen this a couple of times. We'll see it several more times. This is something we need to do. On a, on a regular basis because it does forget our computers, your computers forget every time you restart. But because we've got that backup, that archive, we won't have to start over completely. We should be at the PHP My Admin screen. My handout says log into PHP My Admin, create a database named WordPress, for example. So that should jog your memory that that means we need to be on this screen, PHP My Admin. Then we need to click on Databases. In the Databases tab, in the Database Name box, I'm going to type a name of a database, and I'm suggesting WordPress, lowercase, no spaces. Remember to click Create.
So that was this, log in, create database. Three, copy your archived site from the previous step into your www folder. Well, I still have open, you should still have open the network folder. If you're going to use your work from last week, you can. But if you're not sure that your work was set up properly from last week, I recommend to use mine. Again, mine is in my network folder. And that folder right there, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy the whole thing. A common mistake I see people do is you go to this folder and you open it and then you only copy the zip file, for example. That folder has a zip file and a PHP file. No, it's easiest if you copy the whole folder with last week's date. So you want to right click, copy, my handout is saying copy your archived site, that's what we just did, into your www folder which is inside the C drive, WAMP folder, www. So I'm going All right, so what I'm saying here is I'm going to copy my folder from last week and then in another window, so I'm going to open another computer window. This time in the local disk C, C drive, double click that. You'll see at the bottom the WAMP folder. Double click the WAMP folder. And then a www folder, double click that one. And in the empty spot, right click, paste. So that should copy last week works, last week's work into this week's folder. That's what my handout is saying. So copy the previous backup into the C drive WAMP folder www. In your web browser, access the installer.php file. That folder has a zip file with a copy of everything you did and instructions to bring it back. That's the installer.php. We access the installer.php file in the web browser. So it's saying, for example, you go to the address localhost slash something slash installer.php. Now here's a little bit of critical thinking. My handout, obviously, I can't, I cannot change it every week. Last week was 620. My handout says 613. So if you literally put in your address bar 2016-0613, it will fail. There is no folder in the www folder called 620, is there? There's a folder called, I mean, 613. There's a folder called 620. So on your web browser, you're going to type http colon slash slash localhost slash 2016 06 20 slash installer dot php. You should then take you to the duplicator screen. If it doesn't, as I said, my handout says 2016-13. Obviously wrong, because we've got a folder called 620. So just because my handout tells you something exactly doesn't mean turn off your brain. You have to look at what you've done, and then it should come here. So did everyone get the duplicator screen?
if that address worked properly, you'll get a screen that says duplicator installer step one. There's three steps. So my handout says you go to the address, you'll be asked to fill in a variety of things. We're going to just follow step by step, next, next, next. So it's asking, obviously only the things that I mentioned in the handout should you worry about. If I didn't mention anything else, don't change it. Host is going to stay as localhost. Name says new or existing database name. We just created a database a moment ago like we've been doing for two weeks called WordPress. My handout says that the user is root. And my password, nothing. Don't put anything. Don't literally put nothing. Put nothing. To see if that worked, click Test Connection. It should go green, and it should say Host Success, Database Success, Version, whatever. If any of these are warning, or any of these are error, let me know, because most likely you mistyped the name of your database, or something else, simple mistyping. Did everyone get green success here? No. <laughs> Remember to raise your hand. So that
signals. Right, everyone. So um, <clears throat> this says success, and what we're about to do it's um, going to connect to a database, and then it's going to bring the site back to life. As I said before, WordPress is one of these modern softwares that everything about your site is saved in the database. It's a modern way to build a website. 
the color is in, the, is in an entry in the database, the users, the products, the prices, everything is in the database. That's why we went through this process last week of archiving the site with Duplicator, because it makes a copy not just of everything, like your pictures and such, but all that important stuff from the database. That's why we'd use Duplicator. Now we need to use the other function of Duplicator to, to unzip it and bring it all back to life. Um, so that's why these steps here, I wrote them all exactly and tested it and I've been doing it for years. This is the process. If you do any other process besides this, I can't guarantee you'll get results like we're expecting. So I'm filling this part in. It's all in the handout. I tested it. It says I found the database, etc. There's then going to be a check mark that you have to hit at the bottom left over here because it says I've read all the warnings. So warnings sound scary. And this is scary because what this is saying is if you don't know what you're doing here, you could accidentally delete an old site. So think about it like this. You have a site that exists, victor.com, and for whatever reason you make a backup of it with Duplicator, you work on it on your home computer, and then you want to bring it back to the server. What you're about to do is erase the old version of the site. In our case, we don't have an old version. We just turned on the computer. But at your home computer or on, on a GoDaddy server, you have an old version of the site. And this is just telling you, are you sure you want to replace the old version with this new version? And most of the time, yes. That's the whole point of this process. But again, this could be very detrimental. If you, don't, if you didn't fill in the correct database name, if you didn't fill in the correct username and all of that, you could be deleting the wrong site and replacing it with a different site. It's not a big deal for us, and I'll talk about it again later. But um, yes, we've read the warnings, and we understand what this is. So click to turn that on and then click Run Deployment on the bottom right. You'll get one more big scary pop-up. Just click OK. It's saying the same thing if you had second thoughts, final second thoughts. Depending on how big your site is, how many pictures and products and all of that, this could happen quickly or it could take several minutes. And in my experience, it does take around, um, when it's a real live site, it takes about one to five minutes for us, because it's a relatively small site on our local host computers, it seems to go pretty fast. Mine's already done before I'm finished talking. How many of you did it then get to step two also? Yeah. Most people, okay, if you have any problem, I'll help you in just a moment. But this is saying, these are your old settings, here's your new settings. So imagine the scenario of, I'm moving it from my local host computer to my blue host. It will then say here, Oh, you're moving it from your local host to victorsbakery.com. It'll tell you where it's coming from, where it's going to. But let's say I'm moving it, let's say I had an account on Yahoo. Um, I had a website on Yahoo, and I wanted to move it to PostMonster. So this process would still work here, and it would say, you know, old settings, victor.com, yahoo.com, whatever, and new settings, hostmonster.com. We don't have to do anything here really, but notice, you're using my site, so it says, Welcome to Victor's Bakery. You can change that if you'd like, but every time we come in class and you use my site, it'll have my name. So you can change it if you'd like or not. Don't worry about advanced options at the moment. We'll click Run Update. If we were on, let's say, thevictorsbakery.com, and I finally managed to get victorsbakery.com, that's the old site, the new site. Then we got some final steps here. Let's refer back to my handout about that. Follow the on-screen instructions to begin resurrecting your site. After it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps. Follow them, especially removing the archive, and then return, which is return to the folder and delete the zip file. We'll do that in a moment, and then we'll log in. So here, we've got save permalinks, test site, security cleanup, show report. Show report says no deploy errors and no update notices, and no general notices. Sometimes a warning might appear there, sometimes an error might appear there. But I've been using this plugin and this technique, not just to teach students, but for real clients for years. And it's pretty rare that there's any problems with this. So what I'm showing you is something that my company would do for a real client 
As a matter of fact, we have something, we have to do a version of this like in two days for a real client. I'm going to do this exact process. So I'm teaching you, I'm showing you exactly what I would be doing for a client. The report seems fine. Next is say permalinks. Update URL, rewrite rules, and HC access. Okay. What that's saying is, again, if I was moving from thevictorsbakery.com to victorsbakery.com, most of my links are still pointing to thevictorsbakery.com. I wanted to save, I wanted to resave my links so that now all my links are properly victorsbakery.com. In our case, it doesn't quite apply to us, but that's what that does. And we should do it anyway, even though we're just going from, technically we're going from my computer to your computer, because you got a copy of my site. Let's click Save Permalinks. That'll take us to the login screen. Now remember, this is my site, my username, and my password. The one you made last week, you can use it, but you didn't use it right now to resurrect your site. So mine is admin and password, lowercase p. Obviously, I can't show it to you, but it's password. Username is admin, password is password. Not the one you made up last week. This is not your site. This is a copy of my site. It should take you to the dashboard, specifically in the settings screen, in the permalinks screen. This should look a little familiar. I think we've talked briefly about this screen. These are your addresses. You don't have to change anything. Just at the bottom, click Save. Save Changes. If you notice on your web browser, we have two tabs, two windows. The tab about duplicator and the tab about permalinks. I finished with the permalinks, so I'll close that tab. It should take me back to the duplicator tab. We did this one. We saved the permalinks. Two would be test site, validate all pages, links, etc. That one we're going to skip because what that is saying is, okay, now look at your home page and go to your about page. Look at all your pages. Test it. Follow the links. Check that everything works. And depending on the complexity of your site, that may take you a, a little while. A few minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know. This is something good to do. But again, in my experience of the years of doing this, I usually find it safe to skip it. This plugin works really well. It makes a perfect copy. It brings it back and forth. In my experience, it has worked really well. And that's, of course, obviously just my experience. Some bad bit of bad luck could follow you, and yours doesn't work. But I'm going to assume our site works. I'm not going to go through the process of testing it. I would be clicking and following every one of our links. What we do want to do is this next one here, security cleanup. Click security cleanup. Pops up, says you will now be redirected, so fine, click OK. This took us back to the dashboard, to the duplicator screen, to the tools screen. We have these options here. Delete reserved files. Before I click that, let me explain what this is saying. We copied last week's work from the network folder and put it into your WW folder. What you copied out of my network folder included a zip file and an installer file. We do not unzip the zip file. The installer did it. That duplicator screen did it for us. And what is the result now inside of your WW folder is everything unzipped. There were two files, and now all 200 files are back. Everything's back exactly as we left it. But what's still left is the original installer and the zip file. Conceivably, I could accidentally re-resurrect my site. Meaning, I brought my site back to life, I work on it all day long, and I could possibly accidentally run this installer again. And it'll zap me back to the beginning of the day. 
it'll erase everything that I've done all day long because that's what's in that zip file, that's what's in that installer. So what this screen is telling us, let's clean that up, let's remove that so that you don't accidentally destroy your site back to the beginning of the day. Click Delete Reserved Files. It'll say, okay, we remove this file, and this file, and this file, and this file, and this file. And if I look in the WAMP folder, it removed those files that it's telling me. It removed the, it removed your naked database file, it removed the installer, everything. Um, and it says, please remove these files to avoid leaving security issues. That's what, that's what clicking that button does. Uh, someone else, a hacker, could conceivably think about if they know about this plugin. They know every time someone brings a site back to life, it leaves an installer.php file. If I can only figure out that file, I could hack into their site. So that's another reason why we want to do the security cleanup. <coughs> Although it says, it is recommended to remove your archive file, the zip file from the root of your WordPress. This will need to be done manually. So I cleaned everything up except for one thing, the zip file. You will still need to remove that. If I go back to computer window, local disk C, WAMP folder, www folder, uh, the project folder, which was last week's date, double click that folder. There are all the files for the site, including this one with a huge name. That's what it's telling us. You still have that hanging around. We do not delete it for you. You have to delete it. So once you see that folder, go ahead and then delete on your keyboard. Click yes. That's for security. Just in case you don't have a copy of your site anywhere else, that was a copy of it. Although it's telling you here, for security, you should remove it. That assumes, though, that you've got a copy of your site somewhere. Maybe I saved it on a flash drive. Maybe I saved it in Dropbox. Maybe I saved a copy of it somewhere. And this is a process. Yes, it's cumbersome, but this is this is back this is computer backups. This is website backups. It's important. It's useful. What if your site crashes? What if everything gets corrupted? If you don't have a copy of it somewhere, you have to start all over. Duplicator saves you from that. Duplicator, using the duplicator plugin, makes a perfect copy of your site. We do this for the client once a month. We log in, make a duplicator copy, save it somewhere. You know, they can save it on their computer. We save it on our computer and our three backups drives. If their site crashes, if GoDaddy servers burn down or something, we've got a copy of it and we'll put it back to life over on Bluehost. If they're moving from one server to another, we've got a copy. This is again going back to if you're doing this via Etsy, via Amazon. They take care of all of that behind the scenes. You just have a store, you sell products. When you do this yourself, now you need to be in charge of all of this. That's why I have these handouts. That's why we'll do it together several times. Hopefully it'll stick eventually. Remember to watch the videos a couple of times. This is a useful process, but it is complicated, but important. Um, after you did that, we'll go back to the to the web browser here and now we're finished with duplicator. It served its purpose so you can close the duplicator tab. Go back to visit site and now I've got a perfect copy from last week. A perfect copy of my site from last week. So it's a lot to digest but any questions so far? Remember, everything that we did is in that handout. We'll do it again. We'll do the archiving part at the end of the day again, and then we will do the resurrection in two weeks.
when we need to bring the site back to life. So we did all of this, follow the steps, delete the zip file, log into your newly resurrected site, it's an exact copy, test it if you'd like, done. Brought it back. Okay. So we should have a site that came back to life, uh, and we'll work on it right now.